Welcome back to the table, everybody. Today you have Emily and Nelson, and we just played Terraforming Mars, the dice game. So we wanted to give you our first impressions of it and how we felt after just one play of the game. Just one play. What do you think, Nelson? <laughs> it's a it's a interesting game. It takes Terraforming Mars, which is a game I adore. I've played... Mm. You're a big Terraforming Mars fan. stupid amount of Terraforming okay, Mars. Okay. Like, I, I was saying earlier, I had Terraforming Mars before I was into board games, right? Ah, that That's the game I played. And so I was really interested in playing this diceified version of it. I will tell you, I'm coming from a different perspective. So I like Terraforming Mars, but I don't love it. Okay. I, it's, for me, it's a little bit too long of a game. That's I'll play fair. it online because it does a lot of the, like, upkeep stuff for me that I don't have to take care of and do, and I can play with Prelude pretty easily. Yep. And so for me, I like Terraforming Mars with what it's doing, but it's not, it ha It was not a gateway game for me into the hobby <laughs> or anything, so I don't have any special memories yeah. of Terraforming Mars. That's fair. That's fair. But this is, it does feel like Terraforming Mars it in a way, right? It feels very much like Terraforming with Mars. With the biggest difference, obviously, being that there are dice. There are dice. It's the dice game. It's the dice game. <laughs> And each one of these dice has three different sides on it. There's a common, a uncommon, and then a rare side. So a three, two, one kind of tier system. And these are going to be your resources. So like in Terraforming Mars, you have credits that can pay for cards. Now you can get discounts for cards based on if yep. they have specific tags or what, what have you. This one, that's not the case. Every single card has a cost in the upper corner, mm -hmm. which is a symbol on one of, one of these 15 symbols. There are 15 whole symbols, yes. and you have to have the exact symbol in order to pay for the card. Yes. So there's a lot more of kind of trying to manifest and trying to get the right symbols in order to pay for the cards in your tableau rather than just, I'm going to have a lot of money and pay for everything. Yes, but there are ways to manipulate your yeah. dice, right? So there's a lot of dice manipulation that in the way that you, if you have enough dice, you can pretty much make any combination you want. It's just that you have to have a lot of dice. And so you do still have production in here, mm -hmm. but production this time is going to be for specific colors of dice, yeah. not for specific resources or specific symbols. Yeah. And then depending on what you roll with those dice, you can then take like supporting actions to try to pay dice, to change their face values, or just grab more dice and keep rolling hoping to get the thing you need yeah i think one of my I, I probably my favorite thing about the game is the turn structure where you take a support action and then a main action now the support action the most common one that i was taking was you can pick any one of the dice and roll it and you have that resource now or you can use any of your dice to change another dice already in your pool to something else so you can kind of fix to pay for a card or you can discard a card to draw two cards I think that discard last. To get two cards. Yeah, sorry. Discard a die to get two cards. I think that last one is a lot better. It's you more did powerful that a lot. than you think. Yes, yes. <laughs> it worked out really well. <laughs> in like, like when you're playing Terraforming Mars, it feels like you're trying really hard to get the right cards yeah. to synergize with your engine. In this game, all I have to do is pay a single die with any face, and I get two cards. Like that gives me so much flexibility, yeah. and there's no hand limit, so I can just keep <laughs> getting them and be like, "Give me a production, give me a production." I'll just keep trying until I get the right one, and then I'll pay for it. Put it my thing and it works really well with what I'm doing mm -hmm. plus after you do your support action you still get to do a main action right yep. so it's like terraforming Mars in that if you have symbols you can terraform Mars in all the usual ways that you would think um, you can also play a card into your tableau or you can just pay money to get two points um, and then as you're playing out like blue cards you can also get other special yep. actions right that you can yep. do once per round until you produce again until you produce again and i the producing again is also a, a shift from the core yes. game of terraforming mars because yes. not everyone produces at the same time whenever you want to you instead you forego your normal turn and mm -hmm. take a production action so discard down to three dice draw up to five cards discarding any ones before you draw and then you get your production which is what emily was talking about where you get all your new dice and you get yes. to roll into your resources for the next round. Which at the beginning, right, could be very few dice, right? <laughs> you started with one that only gives you one right. production die. So yep. once you didn't really want to produce because that was going to take you down to very few. Yep. At the end, though, I was getting 10 dice for production. <laughs> so I was like, I don't care. I want to produce as much as possible because I was getting a point, 10 dice. It gives me a huge you, amount of flexibility. You were producing more dice than I ever had in the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really interesting structure and the timing of it. And we only played it once. This is the yep. first time we played. And so Similar to Terraforming Mars, it has an interesting ramp and trying yeah. to understand when that game end is going to come about because you only have to reach two of the global objectives, not all three of them. Yes. Trying to figure out when exactly that's going to be, I think is going to be some of the fun in multiple plays of this game. Yeah, it's I like, would agree. Hit that ramp at the right time. 
That's very satisfying. Yeah, especially because like in our game, we our temperature is barely up at all, <laughs> yeah, right? It's very we cold just on Mars. did the oxygen and the oceans. Whereas in like terraforming Mars, I feel like you can see it coming a little yeah. bit more. And this one I was kind of like, are we halfway through or are we a quarter through? And because it's giving you so much flexibility, even earlier in the game, I was like, oh, we must be close to finishing, right? And I was like, actually, we're nowhere near finishing. We just have yep. a ton of resources yeah. and a ton of things going on. So with that being said, Nelson, who would you say this game is for? I think that this game is for... Okay, let, let's talk about um, Ares Expedition, this game, Ooh. and that game. Because I think it's going to... We're going to be able to frame which one of these games is, the right is for, for, you. for you. Or the best choice for you. And so I think that this game is for those people who want a shorter experience mm -hmm. but still want to feel that like same core love of terraforming mars where they you know making progress getting to trigger all of your cards on your tableau and finding the cards that are going to work for your situation yep. i think people who want that in a hour-long game are going to really enjoy this type yeah, of game. Yeah, and I remember when Ares Expedition came out, people were saying a similar thing where they were like, it's kind of like Terraforming Mars, but shorter. But I think Ares Expedition was a lot closer to Race for the Galaxy. Yeah. Like, much closer to that. And I love Race, so I was like, oh, Ares Expedition is my game. Yeah. This is more like the way that Roll for the Galaxy changed Race for the Galaxy into more of a dice game. Yes. This is like how changing Terraforming Mars into a dice game, yeah. right? And in that way, it's like, it's making it quite a bit lighter, quite a bit more accessible. Um, more chaotic. More chaotic, <laughs> for sure. Um, a little bit more randomness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it also, it really did make it a lot shorter. Yes. And a oh, lot yeah. more accessible, even for people who, like I wouldn't probably just bring Terraforming Mars to somebody who doesn't usually play board games, right. who's not into the hobby. This game, I think you could give to anybody. It's very easy to digest. If yeah. you know Terraforming Mars, you can learn this game in five minutes. Oh, it's, it's a really very quick easy. teach it's because really it, it's really it's the same core as Terraforming Mars. Yeah. Whereas like Ares Expedition, I think if you knew uh, Race for the Galaxy, you almost had an easier time learning yeah. Ares because right. it was almost closer to that in a way. Yeah. That that being said, I like the comparison with race and roll. I came into this game expecting it to feel like Roll for the Galaxy because mm. that was my experience with Ares. It felt like Race for the Galaxy, and I didn't really get that no. too too much. No. I think that they have a same feel for how they changed the core game, but the two dice games feel very separate from each other. Yeah, I would say because Roll for the Galaxy was really uh, like it's just as heavy almost as yeah. Race for the Galaxy. This is much more accessible. Yeah. This is much more like a simpler experience, a simplified experience, and like you said, quite a bit more chaotic. So to who it's for, I would say somebody who liked Terraforming Mars as a great like game that you like the mechanics of, but you wanted it shorter, simplified, mm -hmm. that you can play with people who aren't hobby enthusiasts, me. So this is, <laughs> this is one for me. Yep. Um, and who it's not for, though, I would say people who were diehard terraforming Mars fans, because there are probably going to be some frustrating moments you could probably speak to, Nelson. Yeah, yeah. I, you can't approach this game and expect to have the same level of strategic thinking and planning that you would in terraforming Mars. There's dice rolling, which is random. You're not drafting cards, which is a variant that I've always played with in Terraforming Mars, yeah. where you get to kind of pick and curate the cards in your hand. So there's a, there's a lot of levers of randomness in this game. And so it feels like a very tactical game where I'm making the best decision for mm -hmm. that time. And so if you are someone who really likes the strategic, I'm going to plan out three generations ahead from now. This is really going to pay off. That's going to be very challenging to do in this yes. game. And so if that's something that you love to do, maybe this game is not for you. Yeah, and I would say even like, especially in Terraforming Mars, where like where you place on the board is very important. You oh, own yeah. specific spots. <laughs> that's not a thing here. So we're only getting points once you place it. And yeah. then I don't own any of those spaces on the board. So it's, it is like you were saying, very tactical. And yeah. that like, what do I have in my hand right now? What can I do best right now? What has nobody gone for? And I'll just start going for that. Mm -hmm. So a very different feel than your regular terraforming Mars might make you go into the direction of. Yep. A any other final thoughts on this one, Nelson? I, you know, I think it's, if I played it again, uh -huh. I think I would reset my expectations and have fun with it. I see. And what I've said before is that Roll for the Galaxy is a more fun game than Race for the Galaxy, uh -huh. but I think Race is a better game. I feel like maybe we have some of the same formula here mm -hmm. where this is a fun game. You're rolling a lot of dice. Who doesn't love that, <laughs> right? And just trying to figure that out and then just discarding this dice for two cards to just see all the cards. 
I, you know, that's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. And we didn't even talk about, too, that, like, when we get to five points and 12 points, you yeah. also get these bonus cards yeah. that are making it easier mm -hmm. for you to do more things. So it's it's really rewarding you. And throughout the game, it's like you're getting nice things all yep. the time. It's not as restrictive, yeah. I would definitely say. Oh, yeah. You feel like you can do a lot in this game. Yeah. So that was Terraforming Mars the Dice Game. If you have any questions about it, please put it in the comments below, and we'll love to answer you there. Um, until next time, make sure everyone has the fun at the table, and we'll see you then.